Hi, I am going to talk about our paper, Lightweight Authenticated Encryption Mode of Operation for Tweakable Block Ciphers. I am Takeshi Sugawara, and this is the joint research work with Yusuke Naito. This is the quick overview of my talk. We are proposing a new mode of operation we call PFB or Plaintext Feedback Mode. The first motivation is to achieve 64-bit security with a 64-bit primitive. The 64-bit block length is popular among lightweight block ciphers, but the security degenerates to 32-bit only when they are combined with the mode of operation having the birthday bound security. PFB achieves the beyond the birthday bound security while keeping it lightweight in implementation. The mode of operation is also threshold implementation friendly. This figure illustrates the memory usage of the previous work and PFB with an Without PTI, the state-of-the-art needs a 128-bit state and a 128-bit key. In first-order TI, we need three shares for the state and two shares for the key, assuming a linear key schedule. In PFB, on the other hand, we can replace the 64-bit state into a public state. Since we need no sharing for the public state, we can reduce the overall memory size with TI. Lightweight cryptography has been a topic in cryptography research for more than a decade. The motivation is to design crypto algorithms that achieve efficient performances by design to provide security for resource-constrained devices. The area of research emerged from block cipher design, and some of them are now standardized. Among them, choosing a short block length is a common strategy for making it lightweight, so there are many 64-bit primitives in the field. As a result of the recent advances in lightweight cryptography, we are reaching the limit in which memory or register is the bottleneck rather than the combinatorial circuits. Here are quick examples. S-Box was the heaviest component in the past, but now we can implement 4-bit S-Boxes with 20 to 4-bit gates only. In contrast, a register for a 128-bit data needs 600 to 900 gates. So reducing the memory size is critical for lightweight implementation. Authenticated encryption, or AE, is the algorithm for achieving privacy and authenticity. The de facto standard AE is AES-GCM. Lightweight AE is a hot topic as NIST is running a competition for it. One common way of realizing an AE is to extend a block cipher with a mode of operation. So there is a line of research work for studying the lightweight mode of operation. The figure compares ASGCM with the state of the art. We need 128-bit state and another 128-bit key for running AES. In addition, ASGCM needs 256-bit extra memory, which is eliminated in SAV we proposed at CHESS two years ago. We are hitting the limit because the remaining 256 bits are necessary for just running AES. A possible option is to use a 64-bit block cipher, but we cannot do that because we have only 32-bit security by combining a 64-bit primitive with these modes of operations. Another important subject is side-channel attack resistance. 
Resource constrained devices can be used in a hostile environment that we should clear side channel attacks. But providing side channel attack protection in resource constrained devices is even more challenging. So, lightweight cryptography that enables efficient side channel attack countermeasure is a new frontier of research. There are conventional works on this direction, such as a TI friendly S boxes or an authenticated encryption scheme scream. Masking is the most well studied side channel attack countermeasure. In these countermeasures, we encode a sensitive value as a share and implement cryptography while preserving the shared representation of data. Threshold implementation, or TI, is a kind of masking and particularly popular for hardware implementations because it efficiently provides security in the presence of glitches. A downside of TI in terms of lightweight implementation is that it multiplies the memory cost. This figure shows a three-share representation, which is common for TI, and it triples the memory requirement. Our approach is to reduce the size of nonlinearly updated state that needs a larger number of shares to reduce the memory usage with threshold implementation. We need to use a 64-bit primitive for the purpose, but the birthday bound security is the matter, as I mentioned earlier. To solve these problems, we propose a new mode of operation that uses a tweakable block cipher to efficiently achieve the beyond the birthday bound security. In other words, we can achieve 64-bit security with a 64-bit primitive. This figure again shows the memory usage of the conventional and proposed ones. For efficiently achieving the beyond the birthday security, we need to add an extra state called tweak. So the total memory size is the same without TI. However, we can reduce the memory size with TI because the tweak is public and we don't need to make it a share. Here is the summary of our contributions. We propose a new mode of operation PFB. This is a non-spaced authenticated encryption with associated data using tweakable block cipher. It provides the beyond the birthday bound security, so the security level equals to the block length of the primitive. This scheme is based on the previous work, ICOFP, but we added several improvements, including adding the associated data processing and the support for arbitrary length messages. We also added a new security proof for a tighter security bound. Finally, we give a concrete hardware performance evaluation with threshold implementation. Our mode uses tweakable block cipher, which is an extension of a block cipher with the third input called tweak. Tweakable block cipher was originally proposed for realizing an efficient rekeying. So we can get an independent random permutation even with the same key by changing the tweak. A concrete example of TBC is Skinny, which is also lightweight. Skinny is based on the Tweaky framework in which there is no discrimination between the key and tweak. So a user can assign either tweak or key to Tweaky state. Internally, Tweaky is split into several blocks called TK as shown in this figure, and each TK is scheduled independently in Skinny. 
From hardware designer's perspective, there is no big difference from the conventional block cipher, except for a larger key state. This is our proposed mode PFB. In hashing, we use the TBC output as the next TBC input. In between the TBC calls, PFB absorbs the associated data. There is no feedback in encryption and the message is directly used as the next TBC input. We call this scheme the plain text feedback mode because of this structure. In the meantime, we generate a ciphertext block by XORing the TDC output with the incoming message blocks. The figure on the left is the essential part in PFB operation, and the memory needed for this determines the memory needed for running the entire PFB operation. The figure on the right shows how this structure corresponds to the memory usage. For a 64-bit security, we use a 64-bit block size, shown in blue, and a 128-bit key, shown in red. In addition, we need a 64-bit tweak, which is a concatenation of a small constant for domain separation, a nonce, and a counter. As mentioned earlier, we don't have to protect the public parameter with TI, which makes PFB efficient with TI. PFB aims at achieving BBIT security using BBIT TBC. We prove the security assuming that TBC is tweakable random permutation and that the nonce respecting setting in which there is no repeated nonce between messages. The goal is to prove privacy and authenticity. Privacy is formalized as a game for distinguishing a ciphertext from a random string, and we can prove that they are indistinguishable, meaning that PFB achieves the perfect security. Authenticity is formalized as a game of forging a valid tag given access to the decryption oracle, and we can prove that a successful attack needs 2 to the power of b decryption queries, so PFB achieves the bbit security. With this result, PFB achieves bbit security. This is the proof sketch for privacy. PSB uses a nonce and a counter concatenated as a tweak. Since we assume the nonce respecting setting, there is strictly no repeated tweak in encryption. So all the TBC outputs, Y and T in this figure, are independent and random, which makes the ciphertext indistinguishable from a random string. Therefore, PFB achieves perfect security for privacy. For proving authenticity, we need to consider two attack cases. The first case is to guessing the tag in decryption. Since the tag is almost random, the success probability is 1 over 2 to the power of v for each decryption. So with the number of decryption queries denoted by QD, the success probability becomes the order of QD over 2 to the power of b. The second case is to exploit the collision in the states. We consider a pair of encryption and decryption using the same nonce as shown in this figure in this case, if there is a collision in a particular place, then the collision propagates to the end, resulting in a collision at the final tags, meaning a successful forgery. The probability to observe a collision in a bit state is 1 over 2 to the power of b. So with QD decryption queries, the success probability is the order 
of QD over 2 to the power of B. Since the probability is the order of 1 over 2 to the power of B in both attack cases, we can conclude that PFB achieves B bit security for authenticity. We implemented PFB instantiated with a particular variant of Skinny with 64 bit block and 192 bit wiki. We assign a secret key to the wiki TK1 and TK2 and assign the public tweak to TK3. The blue boundary in the diagram is the Skinny implementation which is based on a common serial architecture that executes single S-box each cycle. The mode of operation is quite small, which is just a thin wrapper composed of max, XOR, and AND gates only. The, each component is colored depending on the number of shares in TI. TK3 shown in green stores the public tweak so we need no protection. TK1 and TK2 in red store a secret key and we can protect them with two shares because the key schedule is linear. Finally, the main state that goes through the S-Box operations needs three shares. We have come back to this figure again which compares PFB with the conventional lock which is SAB instantiated with GIFT lightweight block cipher. Both of them achieve the same 64-bit security. As I mentioned earlier, we can use a 64-bit primitive with PFB so we can reduce the state size that needs three shares. Instead, PFB needs a tweak. As a result, the memory size is the same between the two schemes with a TI. However, the proposed method has a smaller memory size with TI because tweak needs no side channel attack protection. As a result, the proposed method is smaller by 128 bits with TI. This figure shows the hardware performance comparison with 3 share TI. For a fair comparison, we also implemented SAB with GIFT using the same hardware design policy. As a result, the proposed method is smaller by roughly 400 gates, thanks to the smaller register size. This table also shows the other TI of other authenticated encryption schemes available at the time of writing. We can see that the proposed method is much smaller than ASCOM and KETI. The reason is that the key and tweak used in PFB can have smaller number of shares. In contrast, these sponge-based schemes need three shares for the entire state. Actually, there is a generalization of PFB, what we call PFB+, Plus, which we already published in the last Eurocrypt in May. The purpose of PFB is to satisfy 64-bit security, but we sometimes want 128-bit security. We can of course achieve this by instantiating PFB with a 128-bit tweakable block cipher, and which is better than SAB instantiated with a 256-bit block cipher. It is also better because a 256-bit block cipher is a kind of rare. For further optimization, we designed a scheme that achieves 128-bit security with a 64-bit block cipher, so it has beyond the beyond the birthday bound security. 
To achieve this, we need to add a 64-bit extra state shown in red in this figure. So the total memory size is still the same for all the three instantiations. However, PFP Plus is even better than PFP with TI because the extra state is linearly updated. So we need only two shares instead of three with TI. As a result, we can reduce the total memory area by 64 bits with TI. I am concluding my talk. We proposed the new mode of operation PFB, which provides the beyond the birthday band security, and we can reduce the memory size with threshold implementation. We made concrete performance evaluation, and PFB was the smallest. We think TI-friendly mode of operation has a room for further research, including our extension PFB+. The important property we are using in PFB is the heterogeneity between state, key, and tweak, because the number of shares can be smaller in linearly updated states and public states. It is a contrast to permutation-based schemes that have no distinction between them. This is the end of my talk. Thank you for watching.